This is Jonas from vhdlwist.com. In this video, we are going to learn how to use generic constants in VHDL. In the previous tutorial, we created a multiplexer module. Inside of the entity, we created a port with four input signals, an input selector signal, and an output signal. We then instantiated the multiplexer module in our test bench by using the port map statement. By doing this, each of the module's signals were mapped to a local signal in the test bench. But what if we wanted to change the bit width of the input and output signals from 8 bits to, say, 16 bits? Then we will have to change the bit width of the signals declared in the port of the multiplexer module as well, otherwise it wouldn't work. It wouldn't compile. Let's see if we can make this code a little more generic. First, I'm going to copy the testbench code and paste it into a new file, which I will name t16 for tutorial number 16, underscore generic mux tb dot vhd. Remember to change the architecture names as well. Then I'll copy the code for the multiplexer module to a new file named t16 generic mux dot vhd. Also here, I will have to change the architecture names. The last name we will have to change before we start the transformation of this module is in the test bench. We've instantiated a module named t15 mux in our test bench, but our new module is called t16 generic mux. We need to change that as well because otherwise we will be fooling ourselves by using the old module instead of the new one. This will be our starting point for this tutorial. Let's start with the multiplexer module. What we want is to allow the bit width of these signals to be configured from the outside of this module. Instead of the hard-coded value of 7, we want this number to be determined by a generic value when we instantiate it. We can do this by adding another statement above the port declaration. I'm typing generic, open parenthesis, then, inside of the parenthesis, I start typing the name of the generic. I'm naming it data width, because that's what this generic is going to do. It will determine the data width of the input and output signals. After the colon, we specify the type, which in this case can be an integer. Finally, we close off the parenthesis and terminate the line with a semicolon. Then, we can replace the number 7 here with our new generic constant, data width. The range 7 down to 0 include all numbers between 7 and 0, including 7 and 0, that's 8 bits. This is the standard way of declaring an 8-bit range in VHDL. If we set the generic constant data width to 8 because we want an 8 bits wide data bus, what do you think is missing from this statement? That's right, minus 1. We have to declare the ranges data width minus 1 down to 0. I'll just replace all the number 7s with data width minus 1, and that's it. That's all we have to do to this module to make the data width generic. So where is the value of data width going to come from? It's going to come from the test bench. Look at the instantiation of the multiplexer module in the test bench. Right above the port map statement, we're gonna add another line. This time, we're gonna write generic map. Inside of the parenthesis, we're gonna write the name of the generic, which is data width. Then, after this arrow notation, we specify the value which we want to assign to the generic constant. And of course, we want the input and output vector to be 8 bits wide to match the signal declared in our test bench. Ok, let's save these files and add them to our models in project. Select the files and press the compile button two times to make sure that the test bench is using the latest version of our new module. Or you can select them and compile them one by one, starting with the module. Anyway, we are now ready to simulate, so select the generic mux test bench from the start simulation menu. After I add all the signals to the waveform and press run, we can see that the multiplexer starts working. I won't go into details about how the multiplexer works, because we already went through that one in the last tutorial. There's no difference because we haven't changed the logic, we've only changed the code by introducing a generic constant instead of hard coding the values. But we've still got a number of hard coded numbers in the test bench, let's see if we can do something about them. What we're gonna do is to replace them with a constant value. Right here, at the start of the architecture, Above the signal, we're going to declare a constant. We do that by typing the word constant, followed by a name, which in our case is data width. Then, after the colon, we specify the type, which in this case is integer. Finally, after the colon equals, we give the constant its value, which is 8. You can see now that the constants are declared using the same syntax as signals. Constants can be used in place of signals anywhere in the code, but you cannot change their value after the compile time, hence the name constant. You know what to do with all of these signals by now. Change the hard-coded 7 to data width minus 1 everywhere. And finally, in place of this hard-coded 8 in the generic map, we insert the data width constant. That's it. All of our code is much more generic now. All the inputs and output signals both in the module and in the test bench are determined by this single constant. 
if we want to change the bit width, there's only one number that we have to change. Let's save all of this and see if there's any difference in the simulation. Recompile twice and restart the simulation. Before we press run, we see that a new constant value has appeared in the objects window. Let's grab it and drag it into the waveform. When we now press the run button, we can see its value, which is 8. We also see that all the other signals are still working as before. I'm happy with our multiplexer module now, so I think I'll leave it there. To a certain extent, you should use generics as much as possible. If you're using the same basic module many places with smaller variations, generics can allow you to reuse the same implementation throughout your design. Companies often have their own libraries of modules for handling stuff like interfacing I2C devices or UARTs. The basic interfaces are always the same, but with small variations. The generic port of a UART module could be for example the number of data bits and parity settings. Shall it use odd or equal parity or no parity? But you can overdo the use of generics too. We could have made the number of inputs to our multiplexer configurable as well. But I don't think that would be a good idea because it would make it more difficult to understand how to use it. Multiplexer is such a simple component and if the module's entity was too complicated, I would simply write my own implementation instead of using it. That's all I had for you in this video on constants and generics in VHDL. If you liked it, you can check out vhdlwist.com for more tutorials and blog posts.